We'll see if anybody's here. Oh, hey, buddy. Okay, I think we are live. Welcome, everyone. Yay. Okay, so tonight we have a very special guest. Okay, what can I say? Jolene is my oldest friend, I would say. Well, I guess technically maybe Michelle. I've known longer. One of my oldest friends. Um, we were book nerds together in our formative years, which we're going to talk about. Uh, Very formative. Jolene is the executor of my will, if that tells you the level of trust I have in her <laughs> and her loyalty as a friend. Um, and she's just like one of the best people I know and also a book nerd. So I thought it'd be fun for her to join me. Welcome, Jolene. Yay! I'm excited. I feel like I was overhyped, but impossible. I'll take, I'll take it. And you're like a professional book nerd because you have your MFA, and like you work. Uh, yeah, with books. I don't. I don't know if I'd claim that. With I don't. I don't know claim if I would claim any of this, but you know, I. I. Yeah, it's true. Have, you know, people know I, that I'm not. a I don't lie. I. <laughs> Um, facts. I, I wrote some some stuff and uh, somebody gave me a degree for it. So it's pretty cool. I like how yeah. that works. Yeah. 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 So there we go. Yeah. Well, we're going to we're gonna have um, a little book club tonight about this wacky ass book, The Sherwood Ring. Um, what a, and I thought maybe we could get a hold of on Amazon. Yeah, this you can get this on Amazon. I'm sure you can also get you can get this through uh, bookshop.org if you'd like to support your local bookstores. Um, and <laughs> I don't, the audiobook publishers need to figure that out. So that's true. Oh, is there not? Oh, there's not an audio. Okay, we're in a bizarre situation because our true love is the Perilous Guard, which we'll yeah. also talk about. But this is only currently available as audio. It's right. hard to get it in physical or e form. Yeah, yeah. Unless you buy like a second. I don't even know what the status is there. So I think they're available, but this one you can only buy in physical form, and there's no audio. So yeah, it's very yep. yep. Okay, we'll start and say hi to everyone in chat. Yay! Okay, we have somebody who's read it. Welcome to Jolene. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome everybody to live stream. Hi, friend. Hello. So yeah, so I thought we could talk about, start talking, start our talk this evening, sorry, I'm all out of sorts, um, by talking about our shared book history, because I feel like you and I, so we met in, when we were 11, and I feel like in middle school we had, like middle school through high school, we had some share, key texts that we yeah. shared together. And <laughs> that created the canon hey, um yeah like sabrielle we were talking about yep yep i mean like like we did the harry potter thing too so like there was there was that uh i think we both collectively decided we're we're not going back and reading them as adults like we'll just let that be part of like the formative years <laughs> and then yeah. sabrielle yep. yeah. <laughs> i mean the perilous guard was one of them i feel like it was yeah. The perilous guard was definitely one of them. Covered it though. I feel like it was you, and you're like, "Girl, you got to get on this because Christopher." <sighs> what? <laughs> well, okay. So I know my. If I were guessing, I would guess that the perilous guard was on one of our summer reading lists, oh, and we both yeah. selected it, or one of us selected it and keyed the other one in to like. But you need to read this. Yeah. This is this is our stuff, man. Like this, it's got all the kinks that we like. We're into. I, like, I mean, no lie. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna say that we'll go full spoiler on Sherwood Ring. I think oh. we can spoil this, and people can still read it because honestly, it's a journey. Like, <laughs> <laughs> even if we tell you what happens, you need to just read it. On the names, like even just there, <laughs> even just the names. Yeah. <laughs> But this, this I think we won't fully spoil. I will just say the ending of The Perilous Guard. I mm. think, like, mm. there are some scenes, I think some people encounter this in, like, movies or cartoons or whatever, that, like, form, are, like, bedrock formations of your romantic or sexual sensibilities. 
and that is the ending of this book for me. I'm like, this this taught me in part what romance was. I think I kind of have like uh, like in My Fair Lady when uh, like the end of that like that is I just love like the the just ordinary dude who like falls in love with the woman who just is a pain in the butt like that's my that's my thing and it's your kink it achieves it is achieved in this and yeah the part where she comes back in my fair lady spoiler alert i guess uh if you've never seen for my fair lady which has been out for like <laughs> however long <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah like but then she comes back and she's like where's your bloody slippers or something like that and th that's how it ends is like you, you just realize that they both will have that like same dynamic for the rest of their lives but they're going to be together because that's like how they how they do mm -hmm. yeah. that's what i love i love it you love see and for me this is like i well i can't i can't say because it spoils but it's just like just yeah it's a good, it's just, it's a good monologue we'll just put it there there's there's like there's a choice, there's a decision that's made, mm -hmm. and it's just, and then the way that that decision is rewarded mm -hmm. yeah. is my kink. I just can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Also, there's some beautiful descriptions of like fur lined gowns, I feel like, in this book, and right. some like opulent jewels that I was very entranced with. I just like yeah. the whole, like, also, if you need, I feel like this is a good one for spooky season two, just because of like the general vibe of like gloomy Scotland in and castles. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like you could. This still, is like this is very gothy. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if you need like some of that kind of vibe, but you don't want something that's truly like scary or even unsettling, like it's not a murder. Right. So. No, no, it's just like atmospheric. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. there's some fog. I would imagine. For sure. Like, it feels like every page has fog. Right. right. Uh, hello to Melbourne. Oh. No, you're cool. You don't have to have read the book, I don't think. We're gonna, we're just gonna get into it all. Oh, happy birthday. Okay. Yay. Yes. Happy birthday. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Jane Eyre was another defining... I read that on a college visit when I was 16 and like, I didn't choose that college because I didn't pay any attention to it because Rochester was stealing my heart from me. <laughs> no, I've never gotten it back. What can I say? I know he's a bad man, but I don't care. We talked about this. Like there's so many of the gen zoomers at my work who are like, Jan Eyre is trash. And like, I just, I don't know if we ever want to have that conversation, but no, no. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I just they're it is, wrong not a beloved classic which is so weird because like again we loved it it's so good we also I'm trying to think of other things we loved we loved um Garth Nix had a different series called the keys to the kingdom I'm glad you actually which, remember what the real name was well because what 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 do we call it I don't think do we want to admit what we call it no, yes, I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> Poor, Arthur. Poor sweet Arthur with his respiratory. <laughs> yeah, we call it the awesome adventures. Awesome adventures. Of as asthmatic. yeah, the awesome adventures of asthmatic Arthur. It does have asthma. <laughs> Bless his heart. Well, it's because not, like I think it was meant to be like an include like an inclusion thing of like oh he has asthma and he can still go on adventures, but. Right. It was very. He's in a place that like is not very friendly to our asthma. To brothers. asthma, no, yeah. it's real. Like it's like an asthma sufferer's nightmare. This world yeah, like, he is thrust in. Don't go in the house. <laughs> not the respiratory problems because they aren't going to do nothing for you. Like it's not. No, happen. you're sol. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, so that was another. One. I think we were. I remember us reading that when we were. Um, on our junior trip to DC, which I think we were certainly too old to be reading that series, but I think we just did because it was Garth Nix and we loved Garth yeah. Nix. Yeah, totally. That was yeah. a good one. I mean, Sabriel was a huge one uh, for us as young adults. Yeah. Um, I feel like that was one of the few fantasy novels I read that A, 
feel like it had okay one had a dog like as a dog person we do cats a lot in fantasy this one had a dog so i thought that was fun that was a good time sabriel i think so or is it a cat no it's a cat oh i think there's a dog and maybe one of the other ones maybe, maybe there might be that Miller. sounds right yeah 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 and then uh touchstone is that his name the romantic no because it's like something he's like called a fool oh. or something Probably. Yeah, that was another formative romantic. <laughs> yes. Intro. Like, we're just hitting on, like, all my, like, id yeah. <laughs> formative romantic uh, yes. relationships that I ship very hard. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of OTPs up in there. So Yeah. I remember that they kiss in that book and she makes him bleed and that, like, wakes him up or something. Yeah. 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 It was like a reverse yeah. vampire. I'm, I'm just rediscovering a lot of, like, our faves, but in audio for the first time because you know how it's my audio thing so like um, yeah. so tim curry like i was telling you earlier narrates all these audiobooks so I, I mean that seems like a whole new experience for these books that seems like some i don't know if i want tim curry narrating that scene to me i'm gonna be honest because <laughs> fair fair i would just picture him as it or rocky from <laughs> delicate but like you know, gives you I don't know. Tim Curry. Yeah. I mean, I love Tim Curry. Don't get me wrong. Living legend, but right. I don't know. Yeah, sure. And then did you, were you, I feel like you read Howl's Moving Castle with me, right? Didn't we read that one together? Did I never make you read that? Never read it. I probably need to. Oh that. my God. I can't believe I never made you read that. Wow. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, you but should I read that. I don't think we need to, to go like, Explore. You can re-explore and I can explore. For the first. Maybe that's that's what our discussion will be about. Yeah. Because exploring it probably as an adult. I feel like maybe we watched the movie together. Maybe. I know we watched, um, I feel like we watched a lot of uh, Disney sequels together. <laughs> 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 Not the original ones. <laughs> There was like a brief period in the early 2000s where Disney was like, strategy, just make the third movie to like every damn movie we've ever put out. Like, just make three yeah. of them. Like, but like, put zero kids. money behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so every single one of them looks like absolute garbage. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Put the third string in to animate this, yeah. this sucker. So. Well, we were watching it, so it clearly worked in terms yeah. of money making. But. <laughs> yep. Oh, so do you want to talk about this delight of a book? Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about... Okay, so maybe we should talk about, like... I didn't do any research about Elizabeth Marie Pope, yeah. the author. Uh, but she won a Newbery Award. Like, I feel like that isn't... That won a Newbery. Why? Yeah. Why she's not like, we haven't heard more of her. Maybe like we just forget because we're not middle school anymore. If anybody has middle schoolers, like do they talk about her anymore? Like I want to know. I don't think so because like, it's so hard to get a copy of this book now, but it's a Newbery award winner. So why is it out of print? I don't know. I think so. And it's so, it's not like a trashy one either. It's so fucking good. I know. Well, and I remember us talking like, like they could totally like somebody needs to buy the TV or like any of the the movie rights and just like up their age, just like oh maybe yeah, like, this and like this could be a sexy, be sexy. HBO <laughs> adaptation yeah. for real if they age it. But I mean, it was ye oldy times. They don't even have to age them up. It can be yeah, that's true. For us, we need it. Yeah, I I need to see. I need to see Christopher. I'm not gonna lie. Right, right. Yes. And some hose. Um, isn't isn't that what they had in that period? Didn't men wear hose? I, you know, early like Elizabethan era. I'm not sure. I don't know what we were doing back in the day. I think it's like it's basically like le leggings, and then like a cotton piece. Like I think that's the sitch. Um, it's got which it's is a look. is what we should we could maybe pitch it. If you're doing like a marketing pitch, you need to position it to a bunch of TV execs. Be like, it could be sexy, like Outlander. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. I'm looking up Elizabeth Marie Pope. Okay, so she lived from 1917 to 1992. Mm -hmm. And she was an American author and educator specializing in Elizabethan England and the oh, works of John Milton and William Shakespeare. She's written like one book that is not at all middle grade esque. She has a PhD from John Hopkins. Mm -hmm. So she's, you know, and that was probably in the 50s. So like, that's impressive for a woman. Um, let's see here. 1944, she got a PhD from Johns Hopkins. That is baller. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then she was a professor. She was interested in mythology. Okay, which is Let's see here because like definitely in the parallels card we got we got all that, but like this I don't. I'm not sure we do we go there with Sherwood. Ring. No, I mean I think that there's there's sort of like a mythic quality. I don't know. Do you want to do a quick summary of like what this book is, like what happens? I think we're gonna go spoilers, but like I said it earlier, I don't think that this book can fully be spoiled because it's not really about what it's happening. It's about how it happens or right. like. The way it's told. Um, yeah. So am I? Oh no, gosh, I have not prepared. Um, so we are following a young woman who is freshly orphaned. Uh, yeah, freshly orphaned, as the back cover copy says, uh, Peggy. Yeah. Which again, um, I think we'll talk maybe a little bit how it's interesting. I went on Perilous Guard. Apparently, Holly Black, which I've never read any of her stuff, she was super influenced by it. So, like it kind of got like a. Bump. Oh really. Yeah, yeah. Um, she mentioned yeah. it. Like, one of the things that made her want to become a writer. Um, and so a lot of people went and read it after that and were like, this sounds like old tiny stuff. And, you know, well, obviously it is a little bit older, uh, maybe of a prose than they're used to. But um, so Peggy Graham is freshly orphaned. She's sent to go live with her uncle Enos. Did I put I think that's that was how I was saying it. Enos. <laughs> He knows. I mean, the fact that it's Uncle so knows. is, I feel like, not an accident there. Um, but he is a crotchety old man, bachelor, I guess we're to suppose. Who? I, I mean, I got, I caught a couple of moments of sexual tension between him and cousin Mildred or cousin or uh, Mrs. Cunningham. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. It's either yeah. that or like Petunia, or is it Petunia or yeah, Petunia? Who? Is, or maybe maybe Christopher the Seven. I don't know his. I, I mean, feel that's the vibe I get a little bit more. Is maybe yeah. That's why maybe him and closet. He's he's closeted and he's angry about it, which I don't blame him for because I would be angry too. So yeah. she is sent to her ancestral home, I guess you could say, called Rest of yes. In can we just pause and make sure everyone caught that this house is called Rest and Be Thankful. Rest yeah. and Be Thankful. Like it's a that I loved. Yes. Also, I mean, the fact that it's in upstate New York, New Jerusalem is what it's called. Uh, mm -hmm. like from being born up there and having the family from there, I feel like I understand the rest and be thankful thing. It's like you you connect with that on like a very visceral, primitive level. I have a little bit PTSD when somebody would if somebody said rest and be thankful to me, I'd be like having a little bit of uh, of the like childhood, childhood. aggro. Yeah. 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 Passive aggressive, like, yeah. So she goes and she goes to her house, and she's been warned by her father. Like, there's ghosts in this house. Like, it's just laid out to her. Like, yeah, he's just like straight up, just like there are ghosts. There Get ghosts. ready for that when you go. He's like, just let them chill, and she's like, but like you're being metaphorical, and he's like, no, like what are you talking about? There's legit ghosts. Yeah. Get over it. He's I like, not everyone can see them, but like there are ghosts. They're not going to try to hurt you, but like they'll be there. And they're only there, like, there's only, like, a select number. I mean, we don't we don't get that established eventually, but, like, like, like Christopher the Sixth ain't hanging out there. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, we don't, we don't see him. We don't know that. Fair. Well, fair. we do find out at the end of the book, it's only your ancestors who can help you. Like, that's why they come back. I so, it. Christopher the Sixth maybe is showing up for Petunia and Gladiola, but not for our protagonist. <laughs> fair i want to, where's that fanfic i'll write it it's fine um okay yeah that's the sequel I, you can I write it. it the ao3 tags will be happening um so yeah. anywho 
that she goes to rest and be thankful on the way there that she like goes via train because that's what we did back in the day i guess and uh we went via train and then the train conductor is like is somebody coming for you she says no i'll take a cab and they're like that's not a thing and like uber ain't chilling out in the 50s so we have yeah it's like bob has one car that people can borrow but somebody else is already borrowing it so and do you have a no, okay, you're screwed. So, like, he's like, you have to yeah. stop here and walk the rest of the way. Am I remembering they got that right? Yeah, he like makes some sort of like special stop, like a milk milk yeah. run stop. Yes, I mean it's getting more and more fifties as we as we yeah, go. it's very fifties. Like, there's yeah. like he's like, I can make this like janky ass stop. <laughs> I'm not supposed to make, <laughs> and then like basically in the middle of the forest. And then if I yeah. let you off in the middle of this forest, it'll only be a mile and a half for you to yeah. walk. Yeah. So she like, yeah. okay, I guess that's what I got to do. I'm going to trust this random dude who just told me what's up. And so she does <laughs> picking me off this train in the middle of the forest. Yeah. So she, she like yeets off the train and like, <laughs> Makes her way into like to find recipe thankful. Of course, you get lost because what's the story without getting a little lost? Um, it's a spooky, ooky, spooky forest. It's very it's like ooh. it's a little bit of an echo of like her ancestor, right? <laughs> sort of, maybe, um, maybe, maybe. Hmm. Um, and so then she gets lost and she sees this chick on a horse who's like got like a full on cape. Is like just seems fabulous. Seems like. If I saw her, I'd be scared and also be like, queen, awesome, way to go. I'm all yeah. about your look. Did you get that cape off Etsy? Like, where can I get this cape? This, <laughs> this is great. Let me see if I can find the picture. Yes. Oh, yes. And this one has illustrations in it that are very 70s, though. So. Oh, well, we're going to look at dicks for sure because it was my favorite. <laughs> but okay, here she is in her fabulous cape yes. on her little spooky horsey. Yep. She meets her in the woods and she's like, yo, there's a hot dude down the road. He'll take you to the rest of the way. So she finds a hot dude who is Pat. She meets him. Mm-hmm. He's a scholar. And Pat he- Thorne. Pat Thorne. Which I feel like between Pat and Thorne, I'm going with Thorne. But it's fine, Pat. You do you. Um, <laughs> That's a very good point. This seems like a prime time to go by your last name. Call me Pat or call me Thorne. I'm going with Thorne. <laughs> <laughs> a little more getting the girl and apparently pat don't care he's taking her he's like i'll take you there to rest and be thankful so they make it he's got a janky ass car so it just barely gets there they like coast down into rest it's the car that he that he borrowed it's the borrowable car he's the one who borrowed it she even borrowed the car she wouldn't have like her and pat were destined to be hanging out on the road to rest and be thankful so he gets there and the reason he's going to rest and be thankful is he's he's a scholar of scholarly sorts and uh, i think i think scholar is a more accurate <laughs> yeah like i'm very unclear as to what kind of like right. academic institution he's actually either working for or like trying to get accreditation from this is the 50s men could just claim to be scholars when they're <laughs> you know, like it's but like of- honestly yeah, and we're going to find out something about Pat later that even more so makes me think that it was sort of like, yeah, cool. Like, sure, just like show up with this paper and we'll make you a PhD. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So he's, yeah. he's trying to investigate guerrilla warfare in Revolutionary War America. Right? Yes, okay. but he is British. It should be noted. Pat is a Brit. And so he thinks he remembers like journalism and like stuff in his ancestral home back in Scotland, Scotland, yeah, a little a miniature port portrait, yes, of a of a ancient right. ancestor, yeah. yeah. And then he also remembers journals, right? Like he's like, I yes, just through that, and uh, so then he goes to his aunt, who apparently had like when his uncle dies, dad, dad, dad. Oh wait, uncle, his she- cousin, because she's cousin Mildred. So his, so he saw them at his cousin's house. Mm-hmm. And then when his cousin dies, his widowed wife is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. These journals were never here. Right. Like, Pat, get out. And so Pat- Yeah, like, is, like, very aggro about it. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get out of my house. (laughs) Kind of is the vibe. So, 
<laughs> so yeah, wasn't that kind of the vibe you got? She was like mad. Yeah. So he, what, how does he, I, now I, I should have done everything. So he, he thinks that, he thinks, oh, is it that he's some, you know, I don't know how thing, and he's like, ooh, this dude maybe has records on. Um, yeah. I think that he finds maybe in his, his, okay. So his scholarship mm -hmm. in his research, he finds Enos's name somehow. Yes. Uh, again, is a scholar much, maybe much like him. I don't know. Yeah. Like a gentleman. These seem to be just sort of like armchair. Like, you know how like in the 1800s people, people could like just think about, biology and then like get to call themselves a biologist like i think that this was a much looser accreditation time period so enos is a scholar right. of revolutionary war stuff as well <clears throat> yeah so, much like pat so pat is coming to seek his expertise sure he gets yeah. there and enos is like i don't know who said you could come but i want me yeah so, yeah, he's like, I don't like, I don't have time for you. I don't want to look at your face. No. Stay the fuck away from my niece. Right. Like, get out. And like, you can tell they're already vibing. You know. Uh, yeah, Pat, Pat, and Peggy Pat. have have like a yeah insta connection kind of right. situation going on. I would say probably that's like might be my one criticize criticism of, of oh. the and Pat relation, but we're to find that this is not the main plot point, right? Not even kind of like uh, this. You up to this point, you must be thinking this is a book about Peggy and Pat. Right. This is you good. are incorrect. This book is yeah. not really about them at all. And it's like, not only am I getting my stuff, but I'm going to like me and me and Peg's like, we're going to, you know what? <laughs> Like that's how it's like the 1950s version of like I'm coming back and I'm gonna bang your niece like that. That's the implication. Yeah. So anyway, so that's how he leaves. So not on great terms, but you know, Peggy's like, yeah, yeah. But then Peggy's feeling it. Yeah, and then like I guess I you know now I'm kind of forgetting the bit the part where she like just kind of has like this thing with you know some figures out the house. There's Petunia. There's these housekeepers who kind of like are ancestral too, right? Like yeah, all like there's been like generations of the same butler. We are on Christopher the it's Christopher the Seven, right? And he is a direct descendant of Christopher the One, who right. was the first original butler. So it's like everybody in this house have like their families have just lived here for two hundred years. Again, like I, I feel like there's like may maybe some working class commentary on the fact that like yeah, it gets to be Christopher the Seventh. Like screw you. yeah. You know, it does seem like I think that this book is rife for like a Marxian analysis. Absolutely. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, somebody PhD that. Um, yeah, but yeah. so You're welcome. She's getting all that, and then as she's like going to her room and just being like, "This place is uh, just the pits." Like she sees the portrait of the woman she saw that you referenced. It probably is not the same portrait, but because that's very uh, right. Awesome. <laughs> so the person who gave her directions on the road yes. is her great 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 right. aunt Barbara, right? Aunt who Barbara. was alive in like the Revolutionary War times. Right. right. So she's like, which Our her Barbara. dad straight up told her, like, "There yeah. be ghosts. Yeah. Get ready." So, anyways, yeah. uh, maybe you should take it from here. I feel like I got so. Part. Well, I think you did a great job painting the the kind of setting the table. And what you're if you've not read this book, what you're going to find interesting is that everything that we just said is almost hardly in this book at all. <laughs> yeah. of the book because because really the book it's so wacky. It's like it's basically I would describe this book as four interconnected vignettes. That have a framing device, and that framing device is what we just described. Mm -hmm. But the actual meat of the story is that Peggy encounters four different ghosts who tell her a progression of the same story, which is basically the you can think of this as like ye revolutionary war time, how I met your mother. Like basically, this is about. <laughs> <laughs> Two of her ancestors hooking up. 
like finding i not hooking up they they they're very proper getting finding their one true love and getting married That's in the midst scary. of a plot to assassinate george washington i don't know, <laughs> I see. Yeah, I don't know. yeah so <laughs> i mean so the first the first ghost we encounter is her direct ancestor richard graham who goes by dick I, yes <laughs> He chooses again, like Pat. He, he, yeah, he thick over. Yeah, and I need people to look at how just like look <laughs> at this foppish delight of a man. <laughs> like this illustration, yeah. I literally paused and laughed for a smooth ten seconds at this. Like it's something in his hand. I don't know. So Dick, Dick was on the side of he he is a revolutionary he is a trusted um colonel in fact of the revolutionary army under george washington and george washington he like he encounters peggy at, he's he's in his ghostly form he encounters peggy because she finds this scrap of tartan that doesn't belong to her family's tartan so she's like where did this come from and he's like well let me tell you the story of this tartan and George Washington is like, hey, there is this Tory motherfucker up in your neck, like in your hometown's area. And he is Terrible. causing problems. He is messing things up for me. I'm not into this. You need to go find him and put him down. And his name is Peaceable Drummond Sherwood. That is. That is. <laughs> Which is a great name. Um, <laughs> you know, he doesn't go with like, Call me Pat. Oh, I might spoil something. Never mind. We'll we get there. I mean, who knows? So <laughs> Peaceable is messing things up and he's like, he's he's harassing the Revolutionary Army. And so Dick is on the scene he's trying like, to capture him. Like, huzzah, here's some horses and they're loose and like, I'm burning down like, like little things, like little annoying things. Like he's not leading like a, a army, right? No, no, he's it's guerrilla warfare per Pat's research yeah. interest. Yeah. It's guerrilla warfare. Think like in the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson, but if Mel Gibson's people were Tories and were trying to mess up George Washington. It's that kind of vibe, I think. Okay. So Dick is up in New Jerusalem area and he like i don't even i can't like he's going on like he he keeps being thwarted basically by peaceable drum and sherwood because peaceable drum and sherwood is quite the wily quarry we're leaving out he has to go to the shipley's right and he's like, he does I, and i never really think i i don't remember why but there's like this this neighboring family called the shipley's and for some reason he's staying at their house instead of at his own house i don't know why reason i cannot remember because he wants to there's people and they're like, mm -mm, you gotta go Shipley's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, a young lass at the Shipley's named Eleanor. Right. Who he's had a very like pulling pigtails kind of relationship with his whole life. Mm -hmm. And I don't really remember the rest of his, but like that's the first vignette is him basically painting that picture and like the kind of TLDR is that he almost catches peaceable, but he slips on something and he gets away. But from that, he and Eleanor confess their undying love for each other and they're going to get married. Yes. Oh, it's, a, it's and the tartan, it's, right? Because like he can, like he finds out peaceable has been like putting up his tartan to like, tell yes, his code to his infantry guerrilla fighters. Like, yo, this is where I'm at. And then there's like a secret message yes. in at once you get to the end of that trail and then that leads you to peaceable and then you like go fight Americans. I don't know. Like that, I guess. Yeah. I don't it, like, like there's a lot of hand wavy about what they're actually doing, right, right. <laughs> but, but Not, there's some hijinks. So that's the first ghost. Yeah. The second ghost. It's Eleanor, right? Is our girl shit? Is Eleanor. Yeah. And I don't remember, do you remember what did Eleanor talk about? I think okay, so the first one he's talking, he talks about the tartan's actually the second one. I think. No, that's the first one. Okay, because it's called it's. But Eleanor, what is she? Oh yeah, 
they go, they get. She tells the story of Colonel Van Sputterer. Yes. Yeah. And she looks like this. She looks like a butterfly for reasons unknown. Right. Um, and basically, like, this asshole, con like, this other colonel in Washington's army comes and tries to undermine Dick. Yeah. And um, tries to make a fool out of him, but Dick turns it around and he thwarts Van Sputterer and saves George Washington from being either killed or abducted by Peaceable. Because Peaceable almost has George Washington captured. They find, so one of his dudes, one of Dick's dudes, uh, intercepts a message. And like they have to cipher, it's that cipher. That's right. right? Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. in our story is the cipher bit. And so they find out that they're gonna like, down at the old mill, we're gonna capture G. Washington, and so then they intercept it, and while doing so, they get them some some peaceable. Yes. Yeah. Do they actually capture him? They no, they don't. They don't capture him in this one because I think they do. No, they don't capture him in this one. He he escapes, but they save George Washington. The third ghost who comes to talk to them or talk to her is Barbara who was okay. the original ghost who gave her directions. Okay. And Barbara's is, I think, far and away the best yes, story. Yes. Damn, I can't believe I got that. Okay, yes. Barbara. No, 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 it's okay. There's a, there's a lot of like, lot coming of and going. Um, yeah, so yeah. Barbara, it's it fast forward, it's Christmas time, it's snowy. Barbara wants to go to the Shipley farm to spend it with Eleanor and Dick. She's been chilling with she wants her aunt. Yeah, she wants she's at rest and be thankful with her aunt, who's like the worst. She, yes, yeah. So she's at rest and be thankful. She wants to go to the Shipley farm to spend Christmas with yes. Dick and Eleanor. Who are getting uh, married. Who are getting married. Yeah. On the way there, she gets lost. In the snow. And a, in the snow. Yep. And a, a certain gentleman, an, a mysterious stranger, uh, finds her. Yep. And takes her back to rest and be thankful. Yep. And when she awakens, it's peaceable. And he's yep. got Dick locked up in a prison in the bottom of rest and be thankful, which we don't really know why there's like some random jail, jail cell in the cellar of rest and be thankful, but there is. I think yeah. there's something like, vaguely like like it would teach them native american like something kind of like vaguely racist is going out oh, there yeah yeah it was something racist about native americans i forget exactly what hear them yeah so yeah. yeah that's the excuse given for why there's a random prison so <laughs> yeah ancestral upstate new york home <laughs> yeah and hijinks ensue and basically Barbara gets one over on Peaceable in a very exciting way. Mm -hmm. And as he realizes she has gotten one over on him, he proposes marriage to her because he likes how intelligent and wily she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he at that point is jailed. Yes. And then the fourth ghost who comes and tells her story is Peaceable himself. Right. And it's yeah. how he finally like gets out of jail and and finds gets the girl. Yeah. 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 Yes. And it's while she's at some party that Enos is throwing. In like yeah. In the present timeline. She has to be the serving girl, essentially. And she's like, this is fun. Like, I have to, like, hang out with this dude. And being the serving girl means you have to, like, hang out on a screen porch away from everybody else while everybody's, like, getting wasty faced it and having a good time out in the dance hall. And she just has to, like, pour punch. And it's yeah frankly bullshit so like yeah. he's like very upset and then the ghost is like yo i'll keep you company here's a rad story about here's this story about how i proposed to your great 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 aunt. great great yeah, yeah exactly he makes it back over there and like there's this whole thing wait does he do it when he's at the she's at the punch bowl because then pat comes in right because she gets the idea yeah i don't remember exactly the the 
choreography of that, but it was around that time. Again, another echo. Um, Pat's like, I want to come to the party. And she's like, it ain't going to happen. You can't come because my uncle will freak out. Yeah. Enos is not going to have that. And then he manages to get in. And then Enos is like, get out again. Well, she, so in the old story, Peaceable is disguised as a footman. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Barbara. And in the current timeline, Peggy then disguises Thorn as a, as a waiter. Yeah. So it's like parallels. There's a lot of parallels happening here. Right. So that, so all of what those four stories is the bulk of the actual story of this. Yes. But in between we're getting these little like Enos is being super squirrely and secretive about whatever it is he's doing. Um, Pat is trying to see her a little bit, but like not really like they do not spend much screen time at all together. One aside where she's like, I escaped and we chilled for a day and I like fell asleep. Yeah. I think, like, I don't know what was going on there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Subtext. Right. And, uh, yeah. and that's it. I think that's it. Like she just escapes one day and that's when they'd be chilling, but it's like all off screen. It's like, it's yeah, like montage, it would be a montage. And then she's back at the house, you know? Yeah, like of this 250 page book, that's like two pages. Totally. Um, and so the very, so after the ball, Enos then is suddenly taken with a wasting fever. This was written in 1958. And I feel like we knew enough about science at this point that that makes no sense, but like, okay. But maybe it's progressive because it's like anxiety can mesh it up. Okay. I can, t yeah, that's fair. Maybe she's being progressive and not like smelling salts. Yeah, mental health, It you know, the psychosomatic unity, we know like it can, it can mess you up. So he's wasting away and it's, it has something to do with Pat. Like he's asking for Pat. He's saying something about like papers and he's really anxious about all of that. And so they get Pat. Yeah. Pat comes back. Pat comes back. And she's thinking that he wants to give her the papers. Like they're like, she thinks that there's something going on where he has papers that can help him. Right. I think at this point, somehow mm -hmm. between her and Pat, they put it together that the papers that Pat had originally seen back in England at his cousin Mildred's were somehow that Enos has somehow gotten his hands on them. And that is why Enos hates Pat. <laughs> it's like, get the fuck out of here because he has Pat's papers and doesn't want to have to give them back to Pat. Um, I can't remember. Oh, man. The ding dong. All right. Well, they find the papers and they have to find them because they're in a secret chamber because of course. Yes. Barbara, Barbara reveals that there is a hidden compartment somewhere in the library. And so they have to Scooby-Doo figure out where this <laughs> hidden compartment is. And lo and behold, it's got all of these like ancient ancestral treasures in there as well as the papers and diaries that Enos has stolen from Pat. <laughs> And we find out he like went over there and was like, Hey, I'll give you mad money. And cousin Mildred was like, okay, cool. maybe also there's something going on, which you picked up that vibe. I'm not sure. I, <laughs> that is I, I just, they were scheming together. I felt like maybe they could have been more. I mean, yeah. maybe a little sexual tension never hurt nobody. Right. Yeah. I just always, if, unless it's states, states otherwise, I assume everybody has sexual tension. <laughs> <laughs> on the page i just assume everyone has sexual tension with each other yeah. uh, definitely i feel like the argument for store seven is definitely there like i'm i'm willing to make that yeah okay. i think that one's textual that's not just me making assumptions <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah then uh, so yeah they find the papers and they find out like that drum roll like pat's Real name 
you ready for oh, it? Oh no, that's 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 the very last scene. Yeah. We just find out that Pat Pat is has been a little sneaky about the fact that his last name is actually not Thorn. Mm -hmm. Thorn is his title because he is an Earl. Yes. And his last name is Sherwood because he is the direct descendant what? of Barbara and Peaceable. Yes. So they yeah. went back to Scotland and had lots of babies. And then Pat is one of the offspring of many generations. Yes. And so we're to assume that the ghosts have been trying to hook up their great grandchildren. <laughs> so basically we find out the entire point. So basically this book is ghostly how I met your mother. And instead of the, the ending being, I won't spoil the ending of how I met your mother, but like, hey, can I go be with this person? The ending is like, we told you all this so that you could get together. So, and we find literally the Sherwood ring. Like we find we it. We find the engagement ring Peaceable gave to Barbara. Right. Yes. And Pat gives it to Peggy. At the Even end. though Pat and Peggy have spent like 10 pages together in this entire book. Peggy, like literally there's, what is, this like literally made me laugh out loud when I was reading it. I was like, what in the world? Um, Let's see here. It, it's why <laughs> you're not you're not used to being happy, are you, Peggy? Is that what the trouble is? I suppose it is. You don't understand, Pat. I know it's silly, but to be so completely happy all of a sudden when you've never actually been happy for a minute in your whole life, I don't quite know what to do with it. Like what? How is she this happy about being engaged to somebody she's known for five pages in this book? I the also part that I, I mean, I think we all can genetically say they're in the safe zone. But oh, I mean, 100%. That our family tree branched right up into each other. <laughs> our family tree went like this. And now our ghost ancestors want it to come all the way back around like this. I'm like, wow. a big fat X on it. I <laughs> cannot live with that knowledge. And no then I'm going to go hang out with Pat as his earldom. What is an earl? She's going to be, she'll be a, a countess, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but like what a, it's such a weird journey because like clearly the point of the book mostly is to like hang out with characters during George Washington Yes. Like the Revolutionary War. Like that's the main point. Like that's the meat of the book is the story about the Revolutionary War. And I am so confused why it is wrapped around this present day. It's almost like she submitted the book as it was. And then somebody in the 50s was like, you know, it's really hot right now. Ghosts. <laughs> You know what's selling like hotcakes these days? <laughs> oh, horny ghosts who want their great great grandchildren to hook up. <laughs> oh, it's so bizarre. <laughs> it is so hot right now. It's so hot right now. Check out the bestseller list. That's just all it is. Up and down. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's such a weird choice. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> and it's not bad. Like I had a really good time reading this. I just was so like, this is so wacky. What is happening? Why do I don't know. The 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 like you said, the story of the Revolutionary War could have been I mean, like maybe Johnny Tremaine came out at the same time and they're like, Oh, we already got we already got that. Like can you Johnny Tremaine in his silver hand. I love that book. <laughs> no, I need mean, I'm going back and exploring some of the things that I super duper loved as a kid and I'm doing it via audio. So like, that's, what's making it fun. Uh, because yeah. you're not just rereading it. You're like experience it. Although I did read Julie of the wolves recently. And, um, Oh, how was that? It's, it's, I mean, like it's, I, I think it's genuinely a pretty good book. Is it good? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying it was awful. No, it's just like, I read this as a kid. Like, 
girl. It's pretty like, brutal. She got like sexually assaulted at thirteen to as a like a child bride. Does I mean, she? Yeah, and then she's just like eating dog throw up. I mean, like it's a it's a thing. <laughs> Whoa! Don't remember that in that book, but okay. <laughs> Go because you're a kid and you're like. Mm my brain at yeah this point. and like but then i also just like let it go and maybe this is why we have ptsd but like I, I read it because it was a banned book and i wanted to read something during banned book week and i was like i mean there's no reason this should be a banned book but it is yeah i don't i read that at some point in my childhood i mean like that's intense the island of the blue dolphins when you think about the premise of that is pretty fucking intense yep um bridge to terabethia Oof. I can't. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those, I mean, I think sometimes we underestimate what kids can process. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes there's an over correction to saying like kids can't handle anything, but. It's going to read that book. Yeah. I, like, I think experiencing things for the, as an adult, it just is like, I, that's what's funny to me though, is like that you like we, you know, we have these labels on things as being middle grade and, and YA and all, but like, it's a different experience every time you read it in different stages in your life. So I think it's yeah, but it's also like not definitive at the same time. Um, you know, yeah, I had an experience with Julia the Wolves than I did when I was like, probably 11 when I read it the last time. So, you know, or like Hatchet, that's an intense book. Yeah. I remember reading that in I was probably like twelve. Giant Tremaine. Yeah. Giant Tremaine. I love that book. I would be interested pig to see how that held up, but do you remember the Pigman? That was something my first foray into fan fiction was writing Pigman. <laughs> Pig you don't remember the Pigman? Paul's and Dell? I I remember that name. Shut I don't remember anything about this book. Man. If anybody is still watching this and remembers the pig man, tell me what's up. Paul's pig a pig man. He's kind of like, kind of like a pioneer in the YA space. Like he wrote specifically to high schoolers and middle grade kids and they're very yeah. short, but like, and he was like, he's kind of doing like the Juno thing where it's like all like vernacular that kids use. Oh yeah. It's too I'm reading the, yeah, I'm reading the description. I totally do remember that I read this, but I remember, and I remember loving it because I remember Pignati now. But yeah, no, I don't remember anything about this book, actually. One of our, like, English assignments was to write, like, fanfic, essentially, for it. And that's when I was like, oh, this is the thing I want to do. So, fanfic. I dipped my toes into fanfic with Sailor Moon, so... Still not over it. I'll write it as a 30 year old. No problem. <laughs> You're like, I've got my next chapter going up next week. Whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Right. Yeah. Um, but that said, you know, this, I probably this book was think about this. No, I, I didn't find Pat as like swoony right. as I found Christopher in the perilous guard. Like yeah. I don't, I, I told Jolene, I thought that I hadn't read this before, but I remembered, oh, sorry, now we can reveal the final reveal, which is that on the last page, we find out that Pat's oh, okay. real Christian name. I'm gonna let you have it. I'm gonna let you have it. I want you to have okay. it. Okay, <laughs> it's peaceable. His name is Peaceable because he is Peaceable yeah. as Greg Gray. So he, he chose the name Pat because Peaceable is risible as a name to go by every day. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, to your point, Joe, I have no idea why you wouldn't just go by Thorn. That's like such a badass name compared to Pat. I mean, I know it was the 50s, so maybe Pat was a little less of a sure unusual. I don't know. I mean, there wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Pat in like Mad TV skits or not Mad TV? It was like the one person. Oh, SNL, like the Gender unisex. Ambiguous. Yeah, so yeah. You can't out, that's maybe why I'm thinking Pat wouldn't be the name I chose just because it's, it's a skit. But yeah, I think people like unironically name their kid Thorn now, in a way that I'm sure they did not in the fifties. But I do feel like if I, my choices were peaceable, Pat, or Thorn, Thorn is hands down the winner of what I'm going by. Or even Sherwood, his last name's Sherwood. I would pick that over. 
pad or peaceable. So, um, yeah, I don't know that this had like the same, at the end of the Perilous Guard, my heart twitipated um, with joy and delight. And I would not say that that was the feeling I had because he was like talking about how she's going to go with him to live behind a university and darn his socks. And I'm like, this doesn't, as I read earlier, she is blissfully happy about this. I don't know that I would be blissfully happy about that being my. Right. Yeah. It was the 50s. It was the 50s. This is, yeah. But as a woman of a PhD, maybe. I, I yeah. Like, I don't know. Who knows? You can, like, uh, I give up trying to, like, make those judgment calls. But I will say, it's a good time. Like, I think the framework is crazy. Just It's odd. I don't know why it's there, but it makes for a very wacky reading experience. <laughs> think yeah I don't know I don't know what I think as far as like how how I would how I how would I do it if I was Elizabeth Murray Pope if if I was Elizabeth Murray Pope and I was writing the Perilous Guard I would do nothing differently that book is perfection I'm gonna say it it is though somebody pointed out that there's a big time where was it somebody pointed out there's 16 years. So the Perilous Guard was written 16 years after the Sherwood Ring. And I think she learned a lot in those 16 years. Kind of what happened like culturally to us as Americans in those 16 years too, right? Like, very, very true. That was very tumultuous time. But the you're right. The Perilous Guard is a perfect book. Like I have no, no critiques. No, no. Yeah. I know a lot of people are like, oh, the, the prose is antiquated and like all that kind of stuff. It's which fair, but like I don't think that makes it worse. Like there's no measure of making it. It's just your your druthers, I guess, as we would say. It's a stylistic yeah. choice. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. It goes with the Elizabethan time. I don't know. I I no critiques of that book. This book is still really enjoyable. For sure. I think no I think there's two different stories though. Like I think I think you either wrote the George Washington assassination story with Tory love interest side plot, <laughs> or you write the like, hey, it's the 50s and there's ghosts just casually constantly talking to me. Like, it's a, it's sort of a different, I don't know. I don't know that the framing device and the actual yeah. meat of the book are super harmonious. Yeah. But I mostly think, in a way that I still found pretty delightful. Like, what's her shtick? We don't got hmm? any shtick. The main character. I mean, Peggy. I mean, if we're going to argue, I guess. Oh, my gosh. The character, if we will. Like. Yeah. I don't know. What's Peggy doing? She's just hanging out, I, waiting for Pat to come around. Basically. Yeah. Peggy is no, I don't even remember what, Kate, right? Yeah. yeah. Peggy is no Kate. Because Kate is a great main character. I mean, she could have been. We just don't know because we don't get enough screen time with her. She could have been a very plucky, stubborn. You know what I do love about Kate, though? And I know we talk about this every once in a while. Uh, and maybe, maybe there's an argument here. But Kate is like, Elizabeth Marie Pope apologetically makes Kate not cute. And I appreciate that. Like, they, she's like, Kate, I know we talked about this before. You're like, no, I think she just wasn't as cute as her sister. I think she's just not cute. Like, she's not a cute girl. And still, uh, yeah, fine. Like, who cares? Because she's a badass. And well, I appreciate yeah, it. I think it, I appreciate like, that if nothing else, her looks are immaterial to her awesomeness. Yes. And what somebody loves about her. It's not, it's not like the main attraction. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think also, I mean, the, I can, she had a thing too, like, like the monologues that like, uh, that Pat slash Peaceable gives at the end of this and the monologues that Christopher gets, gives, like, I can see how one evolved from the other, like, especially as someone pointed out, this came very much beforehand, like they had the same yeah. kind of Vibe, but one's more evolved and like much more like swoon worthy than the other and like yeah yeah, yeah. They both, but they both have like kind of like they're like darn it I love you too much woman there's no yeah we like 
of action. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm arranging for our future because I'm going to do that with or without you. Right. Yeah. Well, you just like really don't have much of a a decision in this. Like it's going to happen. Yeah. But like you say it in a way that is, is, acceptable swim worthy yeah. <laughs> like not well yeah i like i like this i think i and i totally co-sign with this i think that this is a fun sweet wacky book that i would 100 percent recommend to people i think it's just fun and like it's the kind of ya or middle grade that we just don't have a lot of anymore like and i don't totally know how to quantify that like it's it does have a strong romantic element but it doesn't feel like the way romances are written now in YA. Like it's not angsty. There's like no angst involved in this romance really ever. And it's very, like the, I don't know. Like there's just something about the writing in this that I just don't think would ever get written today, but in a way that I really like. I Like to, to this point, it's fun and sweet. Like this is just a fun book. Right. Yeah. I will say, the ghosts wanted their great great grandkids to hook up, and I just find that weird. I just, I still can't let that go. I, <laughs> it's sweet. They they knew that they were di- they knew that the family tree had diverged too far, and they needed to bring the bloodlines right back together. I'm not European enough. Like maybe that's. I mean, obviously, like I am, but like, well, maybe, I, like I don't. I'm just. I have no like like ancestral ties feeling to like getting my grandkids to hook up so that we can like well maybe you need to just wait in another 150 years they will have to haunt their great 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 grandchildren to get them back together again my spirit i will let you know if i want my grandkids to hook up yeah get back to me yeah in a little while we'll see how that works out but it is it's super fun it's like um I think it's uh, one thing I appreciate about the book is like it moves along, like it clips, you know, yeah. we're not, we're not messing around. Like she goes to Pat's for five minutes. Cool. Excellent. We're moving <laughs> on to like, the cool revolutionary yeah. war plot line, you know? So yeah. I think that, like you said, I don't know if that gets written as much. Uh, also, like, I don't know if YA novels get written at 266 pages because I feel like everything I pick up nowadays is like, she they, they thick. And so that's fine. But like, I don't know. This, yeah. Maybe it, it does. But, you know, I feel like the trend is not to be this length as much. Well, and like, I think when this was written, it probably qualified as what we would call YA. But I think now this is definitely, it reads more middle grade at this point, even though there's such a strong romance as opposed to a bunch of friendship. Like in terms of the sort of, right, I don't know, like, yeah, these books are also, I just think, interesting thinking about the development of YA and middle grade as categories. Um, over time, because even from like when we were teens, I feel like the idea of what qualifies as YA versus middle grade has like solidified a lot more. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me talking to my butt, but. I think it's interesting though. I mean, myself being in publishing, like seeing you know, how those, those different age brackets are marketed. And I mean, like, I have no idea how things were marketed back then, but to know that like YA nowadays is not marketed to young adults, like it's marketed to 30 year old women. And then, yeah, to know that like, that the, you know, this probably was like huge library push. And like, this was for, you know, like it went to the scholastic book fairs and those kind of things uh, that might have to do with it too on how, we understand and kind of accept different age brackets in in literature now. Yeah, 100%. Like there wasn't the same right. adult okay. readership of YA that there is now. So that just has like totally skewed. It's like there's upper YA and then like yeah, actual YA <laughs> basically at this point, like upper YA basically is 
Mm -hmm. YA that's marketed towards non-teens. Yep. Um, Yeah. So I don't know. But I would recommend if you're somebody who likes, I would say like Howl's Moving Castle. I know you've not read that, Jolene, but you definitely should. Um, I I think that vibe of YA, I think that if you liked that, this has that same sort of kind of vibe to it in terms of who it seems to be written for and kind of the underlying to the earlier comment fun sweetness to it. I think that these fit that same sort of like older school version of YA that I personally really love. I also think like if you're looking for, so like I watched the Adams Family movie last night and oh, um, nice. yeah, it's a good one. And it kind of has that same vibe. Like it's like, spooky but like very not scary cozy spooky yeah Yeah. cozy spooky yeah cozy spooky uh very aware like the ghosts are just sort of like a thing and it's not a big deal and like we're not scared by them they're just like part of the paranormal so i think if you enjoy those kind of that kind of vibe you'll definitely enjoy it and it's just like then it has like this tiny mini historical fiction novel wrapped up inside of that you know yes yeah. so it's a good time i love elizabeth marie pope i'll forgive her for trying to get great great grandchildren to hook up and uh <laughs> perilous <laughs> book. like it is it's like yeah it's, it's so good i would put this oh i was gonna say i would put this on the same level as like tamora pierce in terms of like a classic of ya fantasy we didn't even talk about tamora pierce circle of magic oh those were the other books we loved yes you know fanfic i tore that up sandry yeah so good (laughs) fiction.net wattpad yeah no those were fantastic but yeah totally I think if you like um, uh, the Alana series, I think you'd like Perilous Guard. Circle Magic. Yeah, I think so. A little bit. Yeah. Middle grade. Um, Yeah, so like Tamora Pierce, Diana Wynne Jones. Mm -hmm. I think if you like those kinds of books, you would be into The Perilous Guard. And this this I I recommend because I think it's fun and it's easier, I think, to get a hold of. Um, But this is like, honestly, a masterpiece of young adult literature that I am obsessed with. And the audiobook's really good. If people like audio, I would definitely suggest picking up. It's really well narrated. Like the person actually has on point accents, which I think would be tricky in like going between, you know, a British and Scottish accent. I don't know. I, to me, it seems tricky. <laughs> but to, I, to these, to these Americans, it seemed great. <laughs> It seemed right on, right on the money. Oh, um, but yeah, I'm not sure if it actually is, but I think if you're not from that area and could be super critical about it, it's really good. It's really well done. Um, and that actually exists unlike the Sherwood wing, which does not exist in audio, which I'm really bummed. Yeah. RIP. I know. Yeah. Well, yay. I enjoyed I enjoyed having a, a reason for us to read the same book. That was fun. Yep. Um, and we recommend. Yep. Thumbs up. Super good. We recommend. Yep. Um, well, what do you have any parting recommendations of books that you're, you've been excited about recently that you think people should read? Mm-hmm. Good question. Um, so I just finished up. Naomi Novik's uh, A Deadly Education just came out. Oh. Uh, How was it? So I love Naomi Novik, or at least I have loved Uprooted and I love Spinning Silver. Like two of like one of my like recent hey. things, like really, yeah. really love them. I think Spinning Silver was like incredible. Uh, I loved Uprooted too, um, but it kind of, it like, again, it kind of has like my kinks with like the, the chick who's like very stubborn and magical. And then there's like an ornery sorcerer and that's like my thing. Um, and you know, an age gap romance, I am a little bit of a sucker for, yeah. I can't lie. And so um, this one is definitely uh, younger. It's, I mean, it's going after anybody who loves the, 
the, you know, boarding school trope, I think. But mm-hmm. um, there's been a lot of critique about it. And I kind of get it. I kind of get it. It's interesting because the other- What is the critique? It's racist. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of like very like um, I think maybe unintentional, but you know, still worth I think uh, he- hearing yeah. hearing those critiques out. Uh, I there was a couple times while I was reading it, I kind of felt that even as like an old white lady. So I don't know if I fully recommend it yet. I gave it four stars on Goodreads because I enjoyed it, but I am willing to change that while thinking about as the conversation it. evolves. Well, as I digest it a little bit more. So yeah, I would say uh, the one thing about it is so it's a new world. And usually in Spinning Silver and Uprooted, I feel like she's pretty good about being like, this is a new world and like, here's some basic parameters, but like, I'm not going to spell it out to you. This one will literally stop every like 10 minutes and give you this whole spiel about the parameters of the world. And it like, oh, it, thank you for saying that. Cause that means I don't want to read it. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, like I, I gave it four stars. I think it's, it's, it was definitely a 3.5 for me. And then I think it might actually go down, which is a bummer because I do think it's a, like a fun time. It's just, it has, it's not, it's not what I liked in the other two books that I read, I've read by her. Uh, hmm. so that one's kind of I got a little tea going on about it, which is fine. I hadn't heard that. I appreciate you letting me know that because I wasn't aware of it. Um, but I ha- I want to start her um, Napoleonic War, but with dragons series. So mm-hmm. if you want to read that, let me know. And we can read that together because I have that on my e-reader. This is my, my true confessions. I don't like dragons. It's my one fantasy trope that like <sighs> can't go there. Like if wow. it's all about dragons, wow. it's my one thing. It's my one wow. thing. I don't know. Like we can talk about it. I, I think dragons are kind of like nuclear bombs. It's fine if they're like in there. It's just like if it's a dragon series, I just don't know. I mean, like the drag. Wow, I don't yeah. even know how to process that. I just I'm like if I hear there's dragons, it makes me so excited. So I just oh, don't even know. Opposite. opposite. I have to overcome it. I don't. I'm not a big <sighs> dragon fan. It's okay. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Someone else agrees. Kay, Kay agrees. No dragons. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I, lo- I love dragons. Well, I think I particularly in like a paranormal when somebody is a dragon shifter, that is ex- exceptionally exciting to me. <laughs> um, I just love anything that's an unusual shifter. Like I've read ones with like where or uh, like badger shifters. I've read ones with like hedgehog shifters. Anything that's like a random ass shifter, I really enjoy. <laughs> I can't wait for the random ass shifter series that we'll find somewhere. I will say I'm going to, I'm going to finally get on Kate Daniels. Like it's going to happen. It's my next book. I gave you, I gave it to you. So, I mean, you know, I've been. Uh, Magic Burns. Is that what it is? is Yeah, I gave, so I gave, so the journey for folks watching is that Jolene enjoyed Trail of Lightning a lot. Very much so. One so this books. made me hopeful that she could also enjoy Kate Daniels. And I gave you the second book in the series, not the first, because I think people should start with the second book. And if they like that, they can go back and read the first. Because the first one's magic is just described really confusingly. Mm-hmm. And I think it has a potential to lose to lose you. Okay. So fair. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read in that real soon. Um so yeah. I mean, those are some that I've read really recently. I read uh, Mary Oliver, there's an audiobook that she reads her own poetry. And I think if you like poetry and if you, she, she passed away last year, I think. And it was honestly my first exposure to Mary Oliver. Uh, but I think she's great. I think she's like, if you yeah. like as a, as a middle schooler, like, Oh, I like Robert Frost because like I got taught it, you know, and you want like yeah. step it's Mary Oliver. Like, yeah, more- it's very like, naturey it's like naturey meditation i like it because i feel like i'm like this is going to sound morbid and i don't mean it to be like that at all like it it like it comforts me about death like i feel like she takes a very like step back approach about like the cycle of life and we're all in it and there's nothing inherently good or bad about it it's just like something that we have to like accept and like 
find the beauty in every moment because that's all we're really guaranteed. And so I think I think she's great. And like somebody reviewed it on Goodreads. I was watching some of your videos about like your favorite one star reviews of your favorite books. And that's how oh, I felt. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, why is she even talk? She just and like I have to listen to her, and she sounds like um like the kindergarten teacher I had, and I'm like that's what I find soothing, sir. So yeah, I enjoy also I'm having a flashback to people critiquing Elizabeth Warren. It's just like yeah, it's yeah. not my problem that you can't deal with women who speak authoritatively or like <laughs> at all. Yeah, or just at all. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, anyway, I Mary I, Oliver, we love. We, we stand Mary Oliver in this house. I'm She's great. Right. And Blackberry and Blackwater Pond. I'm sorry. Not Blackberry Pond. Blackwater Pond. Blackwater Pond. Recently. And it was, it was good. That's so, lovely. Like some poetry. And then if you, if you want to try it out, I wouldn't say no to a deadly education. I just, there's like this piece where she talks about how deadlocks or dreadlocks will kill you. And I just felt very icky about it. And that's my only hang up right now but then there's a bunch of interviews that you can read and like judge it for yourself some of them i don't know i'd be willing to to, to argue against but a lot of them i don't have the authority to argue against so yeah i think so much what i so that's like like why i'm sad i know i just i i wasn't like dying to read it oh my gosh sorry pause my cat is did you get out okay good Whew, the cats are getting tangled in curtains these days. Um, I wasn't dying to read. I was curious about it. And like, there's so many things I want to read that frankly, I get excited, not excited, but like, I'm not mad if I have a reason to not read a book. Cause it's just like, okay, there's one less I've got to try to get to. Um, so that's good to know. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's always some controversy happening. If you do want like a good Russian folklore album. I've got that on audio. I'm going like, to listen to that at some point. And it was pretty good. I, yeah. I did read a Goodreads review where somebody was like, can somebody stop putting these Russian chicks with like demigods? And I feel that. But it's Why? Exactly. I love a demi. I, I'm a sucker for a mortal and a demigod. So I don't care if they're Russian or... Right. Somalian or whatever. Any any girl with a demigod, I'm going to be excited about. So, yeah, yeah. that's a good one if you like some Russian folk, folk folklore that I think is done pretty well. Well, I I've got that on my audio TBR, so at some point it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This was fun. Yeah, thanks. I thank you for having me. I love talking books. So yeah. Um, well, and you are on Instagram at Blood on the Pages, correct? I, I mean, I am I am Tanzan gently on there. I so every once in a while I'm like, hey, this is a cool book, and that's about it. So yes. sorry if that's not very fun. But I'm there. Come hang out. Come talk to me. I'd love yeah. it. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll talk to you soon. But. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, next week, I think next week we're not doing live stream. I think there'll be a pre recorded video. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah, I'll post on the community tab uh, once I confirm that. So, sounds yeah. fun. Okay, well, thank you everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.